to go from a place where there's just probably a lot of confusion, being sad and in grief that Jesus died, and then trying to figure out what do we do now, right? For this first day of the week where we pick up in the story and, and experiencing the resurrection of Jesus Christ must have just been amazing. Let's start reading here again. We read the old chapter. Let's look down at verse number one. The Bible reads, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So these ladies are going, and again, it, it, it hasn't even dawned yet. It's on Sunday, so this is, it's still dark outside. It's just starting to get light. You know, the, the, the sun's not quite up yet. And they go to the sepulcher and says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. So just as they're getting there, there's, you know, there's the grounds moving because this angel's rolling back the stone that covered the door to show them essentially that just it's empty. Jesus isn't in there. Uh, verse 3 says, His countenance was like lightning. This is talking about the angel's countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And if you remember the story, you know, um, the Pharisees didn't want the. They knew that Jesus Christ was prophesying his own resurrection. Because he was teaching that publicly. He told his disciples first privately about that to kind of prepare them. And he was then also just teaching it publicly that the Son of Man, you know, he was going to be crucified, and he was going to die, and he was going to raise again three days later. He, he gave that prophecy multiple times. He said it himself. And the Pharisees were worried that the disciples might come and try to, to pretend like he resurrected, steal his body, and be like, look, he's not here, you know, he resurrected. And, and they're thinking that, it, you know, they were looking for them to be deceitful and do that. So they set a watch, and they set all these soldiers, and, and, and you know, Pilate said, make it sure. You know, they, they had a lot of people there watching that tomb, and it wasn't just like two guys that fell asleep. I mean, they, they had a full watch on this tomb, and it says here that they, so they obviously saw the angels. They weren't asleep when the angel came and rolled back the tomb, and it says, for fear of him, they, sh they shake and became as dead men. So they're just like pretending like they're dead, because they don't, I mean, this guy just, this angel just came out of nowhere and rolls back this stone. There's this earthquake, and they're like, <laughs> what are we going to do about this? These soldiers, though, think about that. These hardened soldiers became like dead men before the angel. And then the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. So you see, look, see it for yourself. He's not here. And then verse 7 says, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And I, I love the, you know, the message is, hey, he's not here. Now quickly go. This isn't something that you drag your feet with, this news. This is really important news. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And they're still probably just trying to process all this because you go, they're going there expecting to find a body. They wanted to properly embalm the body because they didn't have time to do it because it was the preparation day and he died just before the Sabbath. So they, they couldn't really do anything. They kind of had to quickly get him in the grave because they weren't allowed to do any work. So these ladies are coming to do a better job to, to help... Um, you know, wrap him in the grave clothes and, and everything and take care of his body. They expected to find, a, a, you know, a corpse in his tomb. But then they go, and there's no body there. They're met by this angel, and he's saying, okay, go, look, he's not here. He already told you. He's risen. Now go tell his disciples that he's risen. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Verse 8 says, and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word so they they listened to the angel and you can only imagine what they all must be thinking this was their you know they were afraid they were probably kind of freaked out like what's going on here there's nothing in the grave but at the same time they, they start feeling this great joy knowing that jesus is alive 
He's back from the dead. He's risen. And, you know, they're still kind of processing all of this. But in the meantime, they just go and they run to bring his disciples' word. And this is an exciting story to me. And, and I see, you know, it's, it's an exciting event. A risen Savior. You know, this is the one thing that separates Jesus Christ from every, any other, you know, so, prophet or so-called prophet in the entire world. Any other religion, anyone who worships any type of religion, all have men who served and died and are gone, are dead and buried. Jesus Christ is the only one who died and came back to life. 